You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to the Holistic Movement with host Karina. Karina will look at simple ways to make holistic living easy and accessible. From hydration, sleep, mindset, meditation, breath work, and much more, we will apply current holistic principles to our everyday life and discuss specific attainable changes we can make every week to align with our best health. So please welcome the host of the Holistic Movement, Karina. Welcome back. The Holistic Movement is here with you and for you live on Bold Brave TV. My name is Karina, and I am so pleased that you're joining me. Thank you very much. I know I got a couple of emails about last week, and I know that you saw the little brief meditation that we did at the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I know some of you struggled with it. You had some questions. So today's show is all about meditation. There are a whole bunch of kinds of meditation. Some of them are very structured. Some of them are very loose and wide open. Uh, the good thing that I want to tell you is that it's not necessarily what you've been led to believe it is, um, which for me was great news because I, um, when I was first introduced to meditation, was really scattered and I found it to be really threatening for someone to ask me to sit quietly, and here's the part that really slayed me, and don't move um, for any given period of time. I felt really trapped in my body. Um, I'm here to tell you the good news. Meditation is actually a liberation. Yeah, I heard it right here. It's true, meditation is a liberation. And as soon as I had a great teacher who took all of those um, constraints away and said, no, if your foot hurts or falls asleep or gets pins in it, please move. You know, we're not here to cause pain. And also if you're in pain, well, you can't get deep inside of yourself. All you are thinking about is pain, 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 pain. pain. So I'm going to share with you what I've learned from my many teachers. I'm going to share with you what I've learned teaching meditation. Um, I teach meditation to runners. And that's a fun um, group of people because this is a group of people who usually processes through movement. So if you're one of those people, I'm here to tell you there is a great way in because if you're a runner, especially if you tend to run without music and for longer distances, you already meditate, my friend. Uh, that's liberating, isn't it? I can guarantee you there are day parts of your day where you are meditating. Some people call it daydreaming. Okay, are you a daydreamer? I sure was as a kid. Caught me looking out the window at school, kind of that blank, far-off look. Guess what I was doing? Meditating, right? Let's decide for our purposes that our meditation is not kind of a sense of a void, a nothing, but rather a place of connecting, of getting to know our inner life better, and through that act, improving a whole slew of markers in our life. And uh, there's a lot of wonderful studies that have been done about meditation. Um, some very recently, some, you know, many years ago, we've known for a long time, this is good stuff. Why do we avoid it? And why do we need it now more than ever? It's the social media thing. We are learning to have a shorter and shorter attention span, right? Distraction, 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 distraction. Well, 
I grew up as a young person without any kind of phone, right? I mean, the phone was actually attached to the wall and had a long curly cord and I could only get so far away from everybody overhearing my whole conversation. And it was only when I was home, right, that you could contact me. Now we are always available. We are always distractible. I hope you use that do not disturb function on your phone for parts of your day. I understand you might need to be connected for some parts, of, but for parts of the day, maybe the kids are home and you don't need to worry about that phone call getting through anymore. Could you please turn off your cell phone? Take some focused time for yourself. Let's talk about meditation as a, an increasing ability to look inside. It's called interoception. And it is a muscle that the brain has that you can get better at. And my friend, you can get worse and worse at. If you are constantly connected, constantly distracted, you are getting worse and worse about knowing what's going on in here because you are being pulled by things that are going on out here at all times. So if you would like to improve, I'm just going to read from my list, um, the length of your attention span. Well, that's nice. Anyone who has ADHD, okay, if you're taking any kind of med medication for a shorter attention span, meditation can help you, even if you need to continue taking meditation, work on increasing your attention span. My favorite thing about meditation, though, is it inevitably increases your mood. So if you have depression, if you have just kind of low parts of your day, or maybe you're approaching a low part of your year, right? I don't know about you, but when I get to certain dates or near certain dates, you know, I might not even be totally aware, uh, but then suddenly, oh, this is the anniversary of this sad thing that happened. Oof, my energy has been diving. Meditation can help us not run away from that feeling that we're having, but make friends with it, right? And I think that's just such a nice way of thinking about meditation as an opportunity to make friends with your own mind. Good. So that's a great thing. So it's going to elevate your mood. It's going to increase your attention span. But how about this? Any of you, usually it's about the age of 50, certainly by the age of 65, maybe having a little problem with memory. Yeah, meditation helps with memory loss, short-term, long-term memory loss, medium memory loss as well. So don't know where your keys are, constantly forgetting appointments, um, not sure what day it is. Yeah. This is going to help you meditation and focusing inside yourself to get to know who are you without interruptions and distractions. What is going on? What are you feeling? And very importantly, what are you thinking? Again, I will reiterate, meditation is not about creating a void, right? It's not about being totally blank, but rather sitting on the throne within yourself and witnessing yourself. Oh, look at that big feeling over there. Ooh, when I breathe deep, this feels here. And watch these thoughts. My gracious, I think that thought a lot, just sitting and watching you. Uh, one of my favorite things I ever heard from a meditation instructor is he said, if you cannot sit quietly with yourself for 10 minutes, who can? So making friends with yourself, we're going to do that together. But my favorite way to meditate is, of course, moving meditation. When we come back, we are going to join together and do some very gentle moving meditations. So for my movers, this is a great way in. Uh, join me. You just need to have a little bit of space to stand up. My name is Karina. This is the Holistic Movement. I'm so glad you're here with me. We're going to be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? 
Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to the Holistic Movement live here on Bold Brave TV. I'm so glad you're with me. I hope that you're standing. Let's get right into our notion of moving meditation. Isn't this exciting? You do not need to sit still in what's called Padmasana with like the yogi legs and the hands out in order to find a meditative state. Let's first talk about that a notion of coming within, right? So we're doing that even though we're meditating, I'm not looking out into the world. I'm actually focused in on myself. We are going to do a little um, exercise today. Two of them are Qigong exercises. We've never done Qigong together, so this is exciting. Qigong is a Chinese um, system. Qi, of course, is your life force energy, your vitality. And when Qi gets stuck, in the body, it's said that there's a disruption in energy flow, and this is the source of all illness. So qigong is is the mastery, gong is the mastery of the life force energy, qigong, right? So what we're doing is we're becoming aware. In uh, Chinese medicine, we talk about meridians, these places in the body that are kind of crossroads of major energy points. Guess what? Chakra system, right? Those are the big ones. Those, that whole stack up the spine. Yeah, but also all of these little energy points around the body. We're trying to open the flow of our chi. So we're going to start with our feet planted firmly on the earth, our knees slightly bent so that we're not locking the energy coming up from the earth, but we're inviting it to flow through a nice open hose, right? The energy comes up from the earth. The energy comes down from the sky into the top of my head. And I stand here comfortably in a receiving position. And as we talked about with breath, it is such an important part of being alive. It's the basic indicator that we're still here breathing. So let's do it together. We're going to inhale as we lift the arms. And we're gonna exhale as we lower the arms. Inhale. And exhale. This is called the opening exercise. Opening like the start of something. But opening like the unclogging. Now you know what we're doing. Nothing changes. So focus in on yourself. Do you feel anywhere in your body that has a little bit of a blockage? Good. 
Could you soften it? Focus in on your body. And do you feel anywhere that is holding emotion? And could you let it flow? Feel safe. And let the breath move it. Focus in on your body. And notice if your eyes are soft and wide. Or if they're still darting around the room. Can you bring them to a soft, single focus? As if you can see everything, but are looking at nothing. And focus inside the body. And notice your thoughts. Is there a pattern? Are they useful? Would you like to invite any of them to leave on the exhale? So beautiful. Moving meditation deeper and deeper inside of yourself, becoming more and more aware how you feel, how you move, and how you think, becoming an expert on your inner life through movement and connection with the breath. Fantastic. My friends, relax that, release the body. Give yourself a little sway. We're going to do another Qigong exercise. And before we start this one, I just want to explain which part of the body we're discussing. And the exercise is called knocking on the door of life, which I just love. Wait until you look up some Qigong exercises. The names are just just poetic, right? Here's this one. The door of life is at the back of the kidneys, between the kidney and the belly button. And here's all it is. It's a sway. And the knocking on the door of life is letting my hand in the back gently tap energy into that vital part of the body, bringing chi and flow and awareness. This is moving meditation. It is not complicated. You can do this when you're standing in a line. You can do this by bringing your attention inside your body as you stand outside in the sun in the morning. I encourage you to change your mind about meditation so you can change your life. My friends, we are going to take a short break. You can continue moving as you listen to these words from our sponsors. When we come back, we are going to talk about a certain kind of meditation. It's called mindfulness meditation. You're not going to want to miss it. This is The Holistic Movement. My name is Karina, live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like, it was almost instant, like... 
I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Okay, I hope you swayed your way through that entire break. It was so nice to do a movement meditation with you. Let's consider now this other kind of meditation. So like I said, there are so many ways to meditate. And this kind of meditation is called mindfulness meditation. So mindfulness meditation, the greatest thing about it, and here's the salient point, is if you have pain, this will help, okay? That's been studied, it's been proven. So if you're managing pain in your day, in your body, your emotional pain as well, this will help you manage that. So what is mindfulness meditation? You basically pay attention, right? It's about bringing our focus inside to your thoughts. And you kind of watch them as they arrive, And you begin to notice over the span of your meditation or the years of your meditation, kind of a pattern. You begin to see where you have negative or unuseful thoughts. And with that awareness, because you know yourself and you've been living in here and you can see, uh uh-uh, you know that thought and you can blow it away, right, on the exhale. And so you begin to slowly, slowly change the pattern, not necessarily of never having negative thoughts, because I don't like to set up um, failure potentials, right? Like, of course, we're going to have negative thoughts. We have fear. We have these things pop up out of nowhere. However, what if you knew yourself well enough to know when that thought comes through, You can turn up the volume on this other thought that would override or overwrite it. Does that make sense to you? That's how I found this mindfulness meditation to be very useful for me in my practice. So you, if you have ever taken a retreat where they they were Buddhists who were offering the meditation, this is the kind of meditation that they were doing, this mindfulness meditation. And noticing how you wander, where your attention goes, right? Where the attention goes, the energy flows. And where the energy flows, the mind goes. So knowing basically what are you building by knowing where you float off to, right? Do you float, do you tend to float toward the negative? Or do you tend to really um, bring yourself in a pattern of, I'm going to be okay, I feel safe. I want to read you something. This is from one of the great um, Buddhist meditators. Her name is Pema Chodron. It's from her book, The Wisdom of No Escape, a fantastic um, little piece. But she says in this book, I couldn't say it better, so I have to read what she says. Meditation is about seeing clearly the body that we have, the mind 
that we have, the domestic situation that we have, the job that we have, and the people who are in our lives. It's about seeing how we react to all these things. It's seeing our emotions and thoughts just as they are right now in this very moment, in this very room, on this very seat. It's not about trying to make them go away, not trying to become better than they are, but just seeing clearly with precision and gentleness. And I think that is, when I first started meditating, uh, I wasn't very good friends with myself. And I had a lot of negative patterns of thinking. And what really brought my agitation level up in that, I called it my itchy meditation shirts. Like I pulled a wool shirt on and I was sweaty and I would just get, oh, someone told me to sit still and now I've got itches all over my body and my foot hurts and I cannot sit still. And I would get angry. Guess what? That was my anger. It was just sitting right here inside of me and I was becoming friendly with it. I was beginning to, and I was putting it out in the world, but it was mine, right? And I got to realize, whoa, this is the landscape of my inner world. I didn't love it, so I didn't love visiting it. And so I started with very small doses of getting to know myself. It was like a bad date. You kind of hope that it's, you know, just a quick coffee and then you're out. Well, over time, as I got to know myself and I realized he wasn't making me mad, I was mad. She didn't make me sad or hurt my feelings. I was sad and hurt. I was. And I began to feel that I had some agency from healing myself with breath, with loving kindness seeing where I was missing this proper parenting of myself and filling in the gaps, right? Really becoming friends. And you know how it is with your friends. Sometimes they kind of annoy you and they do things that you're like, really? Seriously? Okay, but you love them. So you come back, right? So this is the way with the meditation. It's about the returning to ourselves, the returning to our breath, the returning to our feelings and our thoughts, and with real gentle kindness, acknowledging them. I don't believe this whole notion of, you know, being void. Initial meditation work is about being full of our personal experience. How do I see the world? And my friend, once you know that first, it's magical, right? How you see the world is the way nobody else sees the world. You are so unique. You've had only the experiences you've had, even if you're a twin, through these eyes and in this heart and in this body that you have, it is how you've wired yourself to know the world. Some of it's useful. Some of it is only useful for a period of time. Meditating can help you see where you're getting yourself hung up on old patterns, right? What I call survival patterns, right? Stuff that you learned because at, in a certain circumstance, maybe in your family of origin, it helped you. But now that you're out in the world and you're a grown-up adult, it might actually be hindering your growth or your expansion in the world. My love, I need you out here living in your purpose. I'm here trying to share mine with you. We are going to talk about a different kind of meditation when we come back. You may have heard of it. It's got that crazy name, Transcendental Meditation. I'll tell you the secret about that meditation live here on Bold Brave TV when we come back to the holistic movement. My name is Karina. We will be right back. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and 
and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Oh, welcome back to the holistic movement. You know you are part of it. It is all about you elevating and growing. Live here on Bold Brave TV, all we want is for you to get better at living in the planet so you can have a great experience of this human existence. Aren't we lucky we woke up today? It's another opportunity to grow. Today we're talking about growing from within. What I love about trees is they actually don't grow up from the trunk. They grow out from the heart. And when you think about that, right, if you were to, and please don't do this, but if you were to notice somebody else had written a heart with their love's names kk plus cm that was a little shout out to the hubby that heart if it was written when you were 11 years old and it was at four foot that's not going to grow up right the tree grows up into the sky and down into the earth and out from the heart and i love that notion when we consider meditation that we're growing more connected into the heart so that we can grow out when we feel safe and secure and we know ourselves in the world, we can come from this place of open heartedness. And that is what allows us to connect with more and more and more people and live in our purpose, whatever your purpose is, it is about connecting for growth. So the foundation of all of us is health. Right. And so we're here to get mental health organized through meditation. And we're talking about transcendental meditation now. Transcendental meditation was brought to the U.S. by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And his idea was that to help people meditate was to know them particularly and to understand what their struggle was and to give them not only the foundation of how to meditate, how to set themselves up for success, but also to give them a personal mantra. And that that personal mantra was going to be useful for them overcoming whatever their personal struggle was. And we all have, you know, that special thing that we came to learn and grow through. And I don't know about you, but if you don't learn the first time, my gracious, it does continue to come back. And you have another and another and another opportunity to learn the same lesson. So if we could use meditation time and a mantra to help us remember how to be our best selves, wouldn't that be wonderful? So transcendental meditation um, officially is something that you do twice a day for 20 minutes. And in order to be introduced into a proper transcendental meditation practice, you actually are meant to take a six-day course. And the course is over six days. It's about 900. 
300 USD, and you're introduced to the basics, and then at the end of the six-day course, you are given your personal mantra. Well, um, this is how it all began, and what happened over time was some of the teachers grew disenchanted with having it be bound by finances, right? I guess was kind of the basis of it. And so they decided, well, forget it. I'm just gonna um, publish all of the mantras and you can kind of pick your own mantra. So you don't have to spend the six days because not everybody has six days off work um, and the $900 to be elevated in this particular way. What I love about the transcendental meditation thing is it introduces this notion of mantra and you don't have to do it in this particular framework, but maybe mantras would work for you. And how mantras work is that much like what you saw with the Qigong, there's a repetitive movement, right? And that repetitive movement really calms the nervous system and focuses the brain because we are knowing what's coming. It's like rocking a baby. You know what's next and what's next. It's very soothing to the body. And so mantras have the same effect on the body. And so with this mantra notion, we can focus the mind. If you have a hard time with the notion in the mindfulness meditation where you're just watching your thoughts, well, some people, when I ask them to watch their thoughts, it's overwhelming because they feel like, you know, I love to think about it as thoughts floating across the sky. Well, they feel like they have a thunderclouds and they have a million thoughts and the, the fog of the thoughts are coming through and they feel overwhelmed by their thoughts. And so it's not a great way in for them because it's overwhelming. And what's overwhelming, we tend not to do again. <laughs> Isn't that right? So maybe this is a better way for you if you have that problem, to come into meditation. And the focus of the mantra, repeated either silently or verbally, is a way to keep your mind focused. And the mantra has another nice thing. If you do it verbally, if you do it out loud in your space, it helps you with the breathing, right? Because we're creating vibration in our body, which has a lot of healing qualities as well. So my transcendental meditation for my age and stage is Kirim. Kirim, 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 Kirim. I could close my eyes. I could continue to make that outer voice noise, or I could just do it quietly in my mind where I'm doing that repetitive transcendental meditation, but it's inside of me and I feel that vibration invitation. I personally recommend, unless you're doing it in a place that that's odd, I do sometimes meditate on the subway, so that might be odd, although not as odd as many things I've seen on the subway. So feel free. But uh, if you, if it's available to make the sound, it actually has another eight layers of healing to it. So I really encourage you to try that. Even if you don't want to do the whole meditation, if you look up online, um, transcendental meditation, you put in your age and your gender, um, they will, there will be a list from one of the former teachers about try this mantra. And if you don't like that mantra, try a different one. There's nothing really fixed about it. Find something that works for you. Be curious, try something new, my friend. If you just tried something new with me today, you just grew from the heart out. Ah, I love this. We are so happy that you're here in the holistic movement. We are going to come back together again and talk again about a different kind of meditation. You didn't like these meditation options? Don't worry, I've got another one for you. Right when we come back live here on Bold Brave TV, my name is Karina and I look forward to seeing you in just a few moments. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Network and tune in radio as Dr. RC will provide thought provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Oh, welcome back to the holistic movement. I'm so glad you joined us again because live on Bold Brave TV, we're going to talk about my favorite kind of meditation. Karina, you say, what would that be? And it is this. It is called loving kindness meditation. Did that surprise you? I'm sure it didn't. Because loving kindness meditation is a meditation where we focus, please, first, on loving yourself. Okay, start there. Because my friend, if you heal your relationship with yourself, you heal your relationship with the world. I only speak about this from my own personal experience. I had many years where I, wow, when I think back to how I used to speak to myself, how I used to think about myself, how I felt about myself, all inside this beautiful body that I was gifted and take good care of now with a lot of love, I am shocked and amazed. And this kind of meditation was transformational for me. If this is a road that lights you up, you will have such a beautiful path into your own heart and seeing the beauty in everyone around you. What I love about loving kindness meditation is although it builds compassion and kindness, love, of course, for ourselves, but here's the key we also build love, compassion, and kindness for everyone else. And when I say everyone else, I mean that person. Okay, here's what I want to tell you about that person, the person that you just thought of that you thought, well, (laughs) everyone except this person. And I can remember who I thought, this was many years ago when I first started doing this work, and I can think of this beautiful human that I had such a, uh, only me, she did not. I don't even think she really knew, you know, thought about me at all, really. But I had such a relationship with her because I was in competition. And it was really, I was externalizing my personal relationship with myself. And when I healed it inside here, I was able to really see what a beautiful, gentle human this was. And I had put so much, projected so much of my crap onto this beautiful human. So when we start this loving kindness work, we start with the work inside, but practice as soon as you can, loving that person outside of you that you think is the bane of your existence, your enemy, your frenemy, whoever they are, because I guarantee you, a lot of that is about your relationship with yourself that you're putting out into the world. And you change that in here and it changes how it reflects back to you. I can only speak from my experience, but I will tell you it was 
pretty powerful stuff. So we focus on this loving relationship and it can start small, right? With this person that I'm thinking about, I started with this. My loving kindness meditation to her was she has nice hair. That's as far as I could go. <laughs> and she really does have very nice hair. I can tell you today that she's a beautiful human who was doing her very best in her life and her experience. And we tangled at a time that I was very vulnerable. And I started a relationship in my mind with her as an agonist. Now, I don't really know where she is in the world, but I do send her a lot of love every time she comes into my heart. Because when I think of her, I know that our connection was a healing place for me. And I'm so grateful, whether she's aware or probably not, that she was a part of that personal healing journey for me. If you are interested in loving kindness meditation, then I encourage you to look at the work of Sharon Salzberg. She is... Uh, She's so clear uh, in how she explains. She has a great book called How to Meditate. Whoa, great place to start. Get that book. It's very um, pragmatic and full of great tips and full of humor about how we can get ourselves off course. And meditation is so funny because we can really get ourselves off course. So, um, and get, you know, who's driving? Hello, <laughs> it's me, right? So, but the great thing that I want to tell you about this loving kindness meditation is that it improves so many things. This has been studied a lot. I just want to run down the list. Depression, anxiety, anger, PTSD, frustration, internal conflict, right? Uh, should I, shouldn't I, right? Are you puzzling over something in your life? What to do, what not to do, what to say to this person? How do you approach this problem? loving kindness meditation. I cannot recommend it enough. It heals so many things. Just, and, and I'll tell you, sometimes it's not in the meditation itself. Sometimes I'll sit down, I'll do my loving kindness meditation, and later I'll be doing something, you know, maybe meditative. Maybe I'll be out walking the dogs, and I'll just be kind of looking at nature, and all of a sudden, bing, ha, huh, I know what to say, do you know, respond with. I know how I'm going to react to that email. Oh, it lands, right? I believe that the more we have this internal relationship open, right, and that chi flowing from the heart to the head and the head to the heart connected through the breath, yeah, <laughs> then inspiration falls in from the heart and floats up to the head or falls into the head and is filtered through the heart. So as you work through this notion of loving kindness meditation, you will find that you are love. You are made of love. You, it is infinite. There is not a scarcity of it in the world. If you didn't get enough when you were young, don't worry. You can create bucket loads, boat loads of it for yourself. You can throw it around and the riches get richer from inside of yourself. This is for me just such a, a important way of healing anxiety because we begin to see the abundance in the world instead of the limitations. We begin to live now, not in, oh, oh what might happen or, oh God, what did I do? Past future. No, thank you. We have no control really over those things. We have this moment, this heart, these thoughts, this collective experience that creates context for what we expect from people. My friend, when you change your expectations of others, you change how they come to you. I have had this happen to me so many times. I come into a situation that old Karina would have been a little mm, ready, right? I was ready, I was ready, right? Ready for a fight, ready for a something. I was over ready. And now new Karina comes in as I'm open and two things. I know that I'll be fine because I'm safe in myself. I can handle anything that the universe gives to me. I know that because I'm really good friends with myself. And I know that love will help it be fine. 
And with those things, knowing that, I feel pretty ready for whatever the world is going to offer me. I hope that you find loving kindness meditation as a way in for yourself or transcendental meditation or mindfulness meditation or moving meditation. My friend, I'm just asking you to connect because you are an important part of the world being a better place and we need you living it and doing it. We do need to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to talk about just briefly the very last kind of meditation we will discuss today. And it's probably something many of you do every week. You're going to be surprised to hear about it. My name is Karina. This is The Holistic Movement live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're back. The Holistic Movement is your show for your system of systems, live on Bold Brave TV every Wednesday at one o'clock. Thanks so much for joining me today. As I told you, we have one final meditation practice that we're going to talk about very briefly, and it's called spiritual meditation. So maybe you do this. Maybe you have some kind of spiritual practice that you do every week, either in a community or by yourself. Me personally, I do a lot of my spiritual work out in nature. She's very healing for me, and I have all of my deep conversations with my higher power when I'm out in nature, and she talks so well to me. Uh, whatever your spiritual practice is, my friends, you are meditating. That is meditation. So when you are practicing your spiritual meditation, consider focusing on your connection to your higher power and how deepening that connection could elevate your personal experience, your ability to move through the world as an act of service. That is my work. And that is why I'm here every week talking to you about the things I know have elevated me in the world. And, and that's what my hope for you is that you learn these basic things so that you can live longer and be of service to all of us because we need you doing that. I want you to know that you do not need to be sitting indoors on a pillow. You don't need to do any of the things that we talked about as particular meditation practices. You need simply to be focused on your personal experience now and you're meditating. So you can do that when you're walking. Okay, that's a great place to do it. Just walking meditation. Feel your feet against the earth. Feel the breath, feel the breeze, feel the sunlight. You're meditating, yes? Awareness, living in the now, you're catching on. It's not hard stuff. 
However, it seems hard for us to pay attention. All you need to do is 10 minutes a day. And I do want you to do it every day. That's the dose. 10 minutes a day, every day, ideally at the same time every day. All of those things put together help your body recalibrate every day and know that it's expanding and expanding. It's a small practice that builds and builds and builds inside of you. So living in the now, breathing in the body, I will mention one app that I use, I love it, it's called Insight Timer. There's also a plenty of other apps, there's Headspace, there's a whole bunch of, Calm is another one that some people like, some of my clients prefer. I like Insight Timer because it's free and you can set it just to have a timer. I do recommend that you complete all of your meditations with a sound. Because one of the things that people have a problem doing when they meditate is they feel they like I open, has it been 10 minutes? They open one eye. Is it how many? Oh, no, I've got three minutes left. Okay. Or, you know, you get so deep in your meditation, my friends, it will happen. I promise. And suddenly 30 minutes have gone by and you had to be somewhere. So in order to make meditation less stressful, I use Insight Timer app and I actually set my timer for 10 minutes. You can do it with music as a background. Uh, you heard my son's music earlier. Thank him so much for making that music for us today. Or you can just have silence and the timer will simply ding when you're done with your 10 minutes of meditation. I recommend that you just give it a go. 10 minutes, anyone can do it, okay? And if you try it and you have success or you have an experience, do me a favor, write me an email, Karina, K-A-R-I-N-A at Chakra Holistic, C-H-A-K-R-A, holistic.com. Let me know how it's going. Let me know if I could be of service. Next week on the Holistic Movement Show, come back because we are talking about something really important for many of us, food intolerances. What is that? Have you had a friend recently who said to you, oh, I'm gluten-free? That's a food intolerance. Or maybe they're celiac, and so they're seriously averse to that particular food. We're going to talk about the top six foods that we all should be attentive to, to see if we have a food intolerance. I look forward to talking to you next week here live on the Holistic Movement Show. My name is Karina. Thanks for joining me on Bold Brave TV. You've been watching The Holistic Movement with host Karina. You are part of the movement, the holistic movement towards wellness. Join us each week as we discuss specific and attainable changes you can make to align yourself for your best health. Come join The Holistic Movement. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.